Social Democrat Rolf Münzenich is an expert on the world's trouble spots. He's deputy parliamentary leader for foreign policy, defense and human rights in the SPD parliamentary group. And he's our guest this week. Hello. A warm welcome to our viewers to the DW interview. I'm Alexandra von Namen. Mr. Mützenich, the world's crises seem to be affecting us more than they used to, partly due to the many refugees who are coming to Germany. And there are heated debates about whether we'll manage to integrate all the people from other cultures who are coming here. That's true. And people everywhere, including in my constituency, wonder, will we manage it? On the other hand, there are many people in Germany who are taking pains to ensure that we manage it. But of course there are insecurities, and these crises are hitting home more because they're taking place so close to Europe. Wars, the migration of refugees, and the attacks in Paris, as well as earlier in Madrid and London, make Europeans aware that we're potentially under threat and don't know what the future holds. You have a special interest in foreign policy. You travel a lot, the Arab world, Iran. Are the differences between cultures really that great? There are differences, but there always have been. There are differences here in Germany too. Bavarians and people from the Rhineland would say that there are differences between their two parts of the country. But on the other hand, through globalization and the influence of the media and other sources of information, these days people know more about one another and about other regions. And of course, there's a process of assimilation. Still, I'd warn people against speaking of a clash of civilizations or even a war. When crises happen, they're usually within a civilization. In Germany, the current subject of debate is what happened on New Year's Eve in your home city of Cologne. Mass assaults took place outside the main train station. Women and girls were sexually molested, robbed and insulted. Eyewitnesses, and now even the police, are saying that the perpetrators appear to be mainly from North Africa or the Arab world. What did you think when you heard about these assaults? No doubt this will dominate debate in the coming days and possibly much longer. That groups of people perpetrated attacks against women, and possibly even planned them in advance, is not just a bad sign for my home city, but also for our society as a whole. I've met people in my electoral district too who say, I don't dare go to certain parts of town anymore, it's not my district anymore. These are serious concerns which can't be changed overnight, but ones we need to work work on with the municipal, state and federal authorities, and not just work on them, but effect change too. Your family, including your wife, live in Cologne. How does she feel about what happened? Of course, it's been a topic in our family. My wife and her friends aren't just unsettled, they're also distressed. But I have to say that young people and children too are unsettled by what people of their age group have done. Though, unfortunately, that's nothing new. On New Year's Eve, there are places in my city where fireworks or rockets are fired indiscriminately at groups of people. And that needs to be stopped right away. At present, the discussion is mainly about the origins of the perpetrators. On social networks, many are saying they were refugees. What do you think about that? 
It's definitely something to be taken seriously, which is why the findings of the law enforcement agencies must be laid on the table for all to see. Not start attributing blame that only certain police officers bore responsibility. Federal police provide security for the main station's forecourt, while the local police are responsible elsewhere. These things need to be amalgamated. But Cologne's city administration also has a big task ahead to conduct a public investigation. In what form? What's crucial is that we, the public, are informed of their findings, and the suspects, regardless of their background, must be prosecuted. I don't think you should need a refugee's signature to ensure he'll respect law and order here in Germany. People seeking asylum here must also abide by the rule of law. Your constituency is in Cologne, and it includes districts with a large number of immigrants. Are you seeing reactions there? Yes. There, too, there's a lot of uncertainty. But these reactions have been coming for a while, not just in the past few days. There's a constant debate. And for a city of a million people, even one in Germany, it's not always easy. We mustn't allow certain problems to be concentrated in certain areas through immigration or assigned living space. The entire city has to take up the issue. But of course, the large number of refugees that are coming to us, many of whom have to be housed in gymnasiums, for example, is a concern to a lot of people, and also in my constituency. So you can understand when someone says, these people who are coming to us have a different image of women and maybe a different view of sexuality. Hundreds of thousands of them are coming and we're afraid we won't succeed in integrating them. I can absolutely understand and respect people's fears. I also know the feeling of not being able to react to a certain situation. And of course that raises fears. But what I can't accept is when these fears are possibly being abused for political purposes. That's happening in Germany, partially on the internet, but more and more with a face and more and more publicly. You have to make a distinction there. Do you think the current discussion may impact German foreign policy in the sense that Germany may be inclined to focus more on stability than on human rights, or that Germany might isolate itself more in the future? I don't want to see those as opposites, because I believe that creating stability and the humanitarian question are two sides of the same coin. They belong together. In Germany's foreign policy, we also try to help bring about stable conditions. Last year we succeeded, after years of work carried out by very different German governments, in reaching a nuclear agreement with Iran, where Germany played a big part because it wants stable conditions in the region. In the long term, I think that policy approach is right. But on the other hand, and this is something the Chancellor emphasized in her New Year's address, the humanitarian character predominates. That is part of Germany's set of values. You're asking for a more self-confident foreign policy which doesn't have to distinguish between regime and society. What do you mean by that? In particular, we must accept that today society is a much larger factor than it used to be in international politics too. Just look at the reaction to the Arab Spring, which spread from Tunisia to many other Arab countries, and the demonstrations on Tahrir Square. There, society influenced foreign policy, for better or worse. So, I think on the one hand you can't ignore that. On the other, a regime is not to be confused with stability. Even today, regimes in the Arab world can, in the long term, lead to instability if they don't seek the support of society, and especially if they don't ensure justice. But what does that mean concretely? Take Saudi Arabia, for instance. It's a country which violates human rights and women's rights, and which executes its critics, yet we still do business with Saudi Arabia. 
It has oil and influence in the region, so we also send weapons to Saudi Arabia. These contradictions are evident, and there's no way to gloss over them. Of course, there's trade with Saudi Arabia. Of course, the world is in part dependent on Saudi Arabia because of its oil and gas reserves. And of course, there are German companies which are very interested in working together with Saudi Arabia. However, and German firms must know this, because I've been saying it not just for days, but for years, the primacy of politics applies here. And if we become convinced that we must set up certain barriers to trade with Saudi Arabia, especially where armaments are concerned, or that we need to engage in some straight talk with Saudi Arabia about the human rights situation there, they must accept that. You were born and raised in Cologne. Your mother was a housewife, your father a locksmith. You once said your parents were a big influence on you. How's that reflected in your political life? I still try to keep my parents and my past in mind. Because basically they're the ones who showed me that social democratic education and social policies were beneficial to me too. Of course, what my mother and father imparted to me has defined me. I'd say that's true of anyone whose family had a big influence on them over a long period of time. Because my father saw himself as working class, he passed on some of his values to me. To wrap up the DW interview, we always ask our guests to complete three sentences for us. As foreign minister, I would... Remain true to my principles. I consider the way the Cologne attacks are being discussed on social media to be... Problematic, as they only single out certain points, and some posts are racist. When Cologne celebrates Carnival in a few weeks, I'll be there. Thank you.